SATA 2 card inside my Mac Pro is five times slower than the SSD in my Mac Pro. However, it launches Final Cut Pro and Photoshop a lot faster than my MacBook Pro. So it's not all about SSD maximum transfer speeds. For me, it's more about the seek speeds. And with SSDs, you're getting really, really fast seek speeds. What seek speeds is, how fast it is to get to a file. With the spindle drives, they're a bit slow, but with SSDs, you can get them instantaneously, so it's a good bet. What I decided to opt for was getting a standard SATA free SSD drive and just plugging it in to the SATA 2 port of my motherboard. This is a disk speed test of a crucial SSD. So I'm getting 250 right and 250 read. So it's maxing out the SATA speed for SATA 2. Now this doesn't give me the maximum transfer speed of that SATA 3 drive, but it still runs really fast and I don't actually notice any difference whatsoever. Now, if you do want to do this and you want to try to plug in your SATA 3 drive in your Mac, there are these special trays that support the smaller SSD drives. I just plugged it into the SATA 2 connector underneath my CD drive and rested it onto my tray. So I've got the SSD there. Uh, I've got it floating underneath the DVD tray. So if I'm not shaking about my Mac Pro, it seems to live fine over there. You can always use some sticky tape and sell tape it yourself. You do not need those $50 <laughs> connectors that they sell. All right, guys, hope you found that useful. If there's anything I missed, please leave a comment below and make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'll be posting more videos on my upgrade process. For example, the memory, CPU, all that kind of stuff. Now, let's get to editing this damn video. It broke.